Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of the Exodus. We're looking at Exodus chapter 32, the incident of the golden calf. Now we saw in our last session that the Israelites had had Aaron make this calf for them and begun to worship it while Moses was up on the mountain. And I want to see how Moses responded when he hears the word. We're in verse 7 of chapter 32. Now, Moses is still on the mountain. And the Lord said to Moses, go down, because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, they have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from my commands. They have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. So the Lord reveals to Moses what is happening in the camp. I've seen these people, the Lord says. They are stiff-necked. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. So God reveals to Moses what has happened. And God says, I'm going to destroy the people for violating the covenant. But I will still fulfill my promise. I will take you, Moses, and out of you I will make my people and I will do my act of redemption through your family. So this is where things stand. I want you to notice how Moses responds. He responds with the heart of an intercessor. He responds as one who prays for the people. Verse 11, Moses sought the favor of the Lord. O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt with a great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent he brought them out to kill them on the mountain, to wipe them off the face of the earth? O oh Lord, turn from your fierce anger. Relent. Do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Then the Lord relented, and he did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. In this passage, we see the wonder and the greatness of Moses' heart. When judgment is about to fall on the people for their great sin, he stands in the role of the intercessor, the one who prays for others. He stands in the gap on behalf of the people and begs with God, pleads with God, intercedes with the Lord, please, Lord, do not bring this disaster on the people. Please relent. Remember the promise you made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Fulfill your promise to your people. I pray for the people. Moses prayed and says, God relented. God responded to the prayers of Moses. Isn't that wonderful? That oftentimes God uses our prayers to accomplish his purpose. God's purpose has always been to have his people and to through them send his redemptive plan. And through the prayers of Moses, God responds. People are saved and the redemptive plan goes on. God uses our prayers and the prayers of the intercessor to accomplish the unfolding of his will. He did through Moses on this great day. Moses is an example to us all of the power of prayer. You know, sometimes we're tempted to think our our prayers don't really make a difference. Sometimes we're we're tempted to think whatever is going to happen is going to happen, whether we pray or not. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that God uses our prayers and his answers to our prayers in the accomplishment of his will. Let us be like Moses, bold in our prayers, bold in our intercession on behalf of the people. You know, later in the Old Testament, God will say through one of the prophets, I looked for someone to stand in the gap on behalf of the land. In other words, I was looking for an intercessor, someone to pray for the people. God calls us, I believe, his people to be intercessors, to stand in the gap like Moses did, to stand on behalf of the people and pray and ask God. The wonder is God hears us when we pray and he answers. On this day, God responded to Moses, the intercessor. And I believe you and I should stand in similar roles, pray with faith, pray with confidence to a God who hears and a God who who answers. When someone is sick, pray for them, pray for their healing. When someone is lost, pray for them, pray for their salvation. 
When there's need of revival, pray. Pray that revival might come. When we need to know the will of God, pray. Pray that we might understand how God wants us to act. Pray, pray, pray. Be an intercessor. Be like Moses. Amen and amen. Hope you have a great day today, and I'll see you next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of the Exodus.